Looks like someone had a long night. I can't remember the last time I actually saw him sleep. Guess the middle of the floor is better than nothing. What are you doing? Dirty dishes in the sink stresses him out. Could have fooled me. I take it this place used to be a little... Less of a shithole. Yeah. Hold my cane while I finish this up? Yeah, sure thing. How have you been? Hmm? I said, how have you been holding up? Fine. Why, should I not be? No, just... You're always the one to check up on us. Someone's gotta make sure you're okay from time to time, too. It gets tiring when it's one-sided. I get the feeling you know all about that. Any updates on Crane? No, nothing. Take it you're still convinced something's up. I'm positive. Hamlet, Act 4, Scene 6. Horatio gets a letter telling him that Hamlet was captured by pirates. A weird thing to bring up out of the blue, don't you think? I mean, yeah, but you said you called to school and he hasn't been missing any classes. I know. Still, something about it feels off. I don't know, I'm probably overthinking it. No, something's definitely up. Hell, even I could tell that when he called. You're selling yourself short. Second guessing. Overthinking. Do you tell Victor that, too? He overthinks shit on a whole other level. Just last week, he nearly had an anxiety attack because the guy working at the Duncan he goes to every single day knew his name. Came down for me quick, though. Kane? Kane. Oh, shit. You met up with that journalist yesterday, right? How'd that go? Good. I mean, obviously I was a bit anxious at first. Last time I was interviewed, it was after what happened with Eric, so that wasn't exactly a great experience. But if Laura knows anything about all that, she didn't mention it. Well, that's good. Yeah, it was nice. Not a lot of love for stagehands these days, especially in local theater. I'm surprised she wanted to write a story on it. When do you think you'll go back to the spotlight? Baby steps, Henry. Right. Sorry. Anyway, she said she might want to meet up again eventually for some more details. I'm not sure what else I can give her, but hey, why not? You could tell her about the time we helped vanquish some fucking plague demon or whatever the hell. <laughs> I'm sure she'd love it. <laughs> yeah, I'll get right on that. Hey, it didn't give her a story. Speaking of stories... No. I know something happened, Henry. Nothing happened. Not home from vacation for 20 minutes and you looked scared out of your mind. Something happened. Look, it's nothing. It's nothing. Okay? Her <sighs> room was on the fourth floor, pretty much right across from the elevator. It was a nice room, actually. Better than what we usually got when we used to go there when I was a kid. I guess being the off-season, my mom got it at a good price. In the room next to us, there was a sky. Older. A veteran, I guess. My parents would talk to him sometimes. He and Dad would tell war stories. I never paid much attention. I've heard enough of them over the years to last me a lifetime. The day before we left, I had to sit down in the lobby because I had things like you wouldn't believe. One of the guys at the reception desk was, well, he was freaking out. Said he saw that soldier guy leave the hotel that night. And the only problem was, he died about five minutes before that. Natural causes. I guess he'd been sick for a while, but he was sure he saw him. I thought you didn't believe in ghosts? I don't know what I believe, but look, it's not about this guy. That night I woke up at around five or so, and there was a note on the side table from my parents saying they'd gone for the walk on the beach. Why the hell they want to do that when it's fifty degrees out and it's still dark is beyond me, but whatever. So I roll over and... <sighs> Standing by the window was Elliot fucking Lavenza. Oh, God. He didn't say anything. He just... He just stared at me. He had bruises around his neck, and he... He was crying. He looked so scared. I mean... God, I've never seen him like that. 
I tried to talk to him, but like I said, he never spoke. He just shook his head and left the room. I tried to follow him, but I didn't think to grab my cane, so I kept losing my balance, and it took me a while. By the time I got to the hallway, he was gone. It couldn't have lasted more than two minutes, but... <sighs> I've had worse nightmares. And you're sure it was a nightmare? I'm choosing to. Besides, the place we were staying at was like an hour away from where he died. Two hours from here. If you were a ghost, why would he show up at a place he'd probably never been? Even if it was a dream, it still sounds awful. Yeah. Do you think it was my fault? What do you mean? He died because Victor never finished his fucked up second experiment. If I just listened, maybe he wouldn't have tried to stop and maybe Elliot would still be alive. Do you really think you'd have let him go through with it? I don't know. Like, obviously the whole concept is just a mess of issues that would make any member of an ethics committee crawl out of their goddamn skin. But the way I look at it, people are... I'm going to say complicated, for lack of a better word. Cliché, but bear with me. There are no good or bad people. We're constantly shifting in morality based on our actions in any given situation. Knowing what I know now, Victor was doing what, at the time, he felt was morally right. I'm sure he's rambled to you about why he started researching all that shit. His second attempt was his idea of damage control. So... Maybe I would have seen all that. Maybe I would have understood. Maybe it wouldn't have fucked everyone over. Henry, you didn't fuck anyone over. I can't imagine what it was like to walk in on that. You were probably in shock, and I'm sure Victor wasn't exactly completely coherent. That's not my ringtone. You can answer it. Fuck no! Well, I was going to ask if you'd had any more creepy shit happen, but I guess that answers the question. It's calmed down a lot, though. I think that's the first thing I've seen in a few days. Yeah. You good? It should have stopped, though, right? Like, I assume that, what, Crane Caller, Red Death? I think so, yeah. I figured our little excursion with her was the answer. I don't know why I thought that, but... Plus, how do we know that the receptionist at the hotel didn't actually see a dead guy walking around? What if he did, and now we're starting to... I guess, spread this shit? I mean, this isn't going to be one of those situations where we keep having to take down worse and worse shit until we finally get to the bottom of everything, is it? Because I know those stories. And they always have one thing in common. And what's that? Not everyone makes it out alive. Hello? Hey, Sleeping Beauty. What are you guys doing here so early? Victor, it's 3 p.m. So it is. What's up, everything okay? Yeah, fine. We were just in the neighborhood. Henry, you live in the neighborhood. Not in their rich people part of it, though. We're taking you to lunch. What? You heard her. Rumor has it you haven't left the house in four days. That means whatever you've eaten has probably been garbage. Old man Dan ratted me out, didn't he? The ultimate treasonous act of making sure you don't die. So, go change, get ready, and we'll head out. I, guys, I'm really busy with- The journal can wait, Victor. It'll still be here when you get back. Can I wake up a bit first? Sure thing. Oh, this was on your porch, by the way. Fancy writing. Your sister send you a care package? No, I don't think so. Even if she did decide to write like that, she'd put a return address. And you didn't order anything? No, nothing. We're all thinking the same thing, right? Like, this is obviously a trap. Why would anyone want to hurt you? Right. Still, that doesn't really seem like Eric's style. And if there's anything else out there that's got its eye on you, a mystery package doesn't seem like the way it'd go. 
The last one could kill people just by looking at them. Don't you think a rigged box seems a little... boring? Fine. But if it's a bomb and we all die, I'm gonna be pissed. VHS tape. That's... something. Golden Girls, April 10th, 1993. That's Mom's handwriting. Do you have a VCR? Why would I have a VCR? I am looking at a Victrola right now. No, I don't have a VCR. Well, I think you'd best find someone who does. Because I don't think I need to tell you that that's probably not Golden Girls. <laughs> I bet your old man Dan has one. Well, let's go see. We- Later. <sighs> I need to take a break from all this... everything. Yeah. You're right. I'm gonna get dressed.